started out playing the ukulele back in 2001 after I just happened to find some old ukes at a yard sale. I'd been a banjo player and guitar player for many years, and I was immediately captivated by this little instrument that was similar to both the guitar and the banjo in a lot of ways, but actually had a personality all its own. And I'd been playing clawhammer banjo for about 30 years, and one of the first things that struck me about the uke was how compatible it was to the same clawhammer techniques as the five-string banjo. Now, unlike most instruments, um, both the five-string banjo and the ukulele have a higher pitched string on top as you're holding the instrument in playing position. That's, uh, that similarity makes it easy to use the same techniques on both instruments. Um, in this short series of videos, I'm going to teach you the same techniques that I use to play claw hammer ukulele. Now, after I complete this series, I'll be adding some additional videos teaching individual songs in the claw hammer style. The bum ditty is the foundation of the claw hammer style. It's actually a simple movement with your right hand, but because it's different than other styles of picking, it's sometimes perceived as a difficult technique that's hard to master. I don't really believe that's true. I think the bum ditty can be learned in just a few minutes, and at the end of this video, you'll know how to play it. Now, having said that, once you learn the basics, it's up to you to practice until the movement becomes second nature. That's not going to happen in a week or two, maybe not a month or two. But over time, if you stick with it, this is going to become a very intuitive and natural motion. You'll be amazed how easy it is to play claw hammer ukulele. Now, if you've done any finger picking on a stringed instrument, you're probably used to playing some notes with your thumb in a downward motion. And you've used one or more fingers to pick other strings with an upward motion. Now, in claw hammer, the thumb still plays notes with a downward motion, so that's basically the same. The other notes, however, are also played with the downward motion and with the back of your fingernail. Now, since all the notes are hit with a downward motion, I've heard some banjo players refer to it as down picking instead of claw hammer. And there are other names for it um, as well, such as frailing. Some people make distinctions based on small differences, but to me it's all claw hammer. And that's how I'm going to refer to it. Now here are the basics of playing the bum ditty. You use your thumb and either your middle finger or your index finger. Uh, you might want to start out by using your index finger for a while, then switch around, try to use your middle finger some, see which one of these works best for you. I started out back in the 1970s using my middle finger, that's still how I play, but I actually think that you might get more volume and possibly more control with your index finger. If I were to start out again, I'd probably give more consideration to using my index finger. Uh, so give both of them a try, see which you like best. You could switch them around, um, try both. Um, the middle finger is so ingrained in me, I'm always going back to that. So uh, if I refer to uh, the middle finger in any of these claw hammer tutorials, just know that it's, you can be used at either your index or middle finger. Now to play the bum ditty, you should hold your hand in a kind of a claw position. Some people hold their hand pretty rigidly. I prefer to be just a little looser with mine. Something you don't want to do is pluck at strings don't want to be plucking. Um, you leave your hand in this claw position. Since I leave my hand just a little loose, you might see a little movement uh, as I bring my hand down, but it's not really a lot. Uh, if you hold your hand rigidly in that claw position, then possibly you won't see hardly any movement in the joints of your right hand. I personally like just a little looser than that though. So either way is fine. No perfect way to do this. Uh, so you decide which is best for you. Uh, notice that most of the movement in your right hand should be the result of bending your wrist. You think of it kind of as knocking on a door. Um, I'm going to hold a C chord for all these examples. So you'll also want to hold a C chord while you're playing along. Now here's the basic movement with the back of the fingernail. With my middle finger, I'm going to hit the first string. Now as I hit that first string, I want you to notice a couple of things. First, as I already mentioned, most of the movement is coming from my wrist. See that? I also want you to notice that as I bring my hand down and hit the first string with the back of my fingernail, my thumb comes to rest on the fourth string. 
See my thumb? And be sure you rest your thumb on that fourth string every time. You have to practice it slowly to develop the habit, and gradually you build up your speed. And when you get to the point that you're playing normal, at normal speed, it happens so fast that it's not really perceptible. But it's really important that your thumb lands on that top string every time it's not flying up in the air. Uh, your thumb on the top string provides kind of an anchor to help you stay in the proper playing position. Now, playing the first string like this is the bum and the bum ditty. So the bum's just a single note. It can be either the first three strings. And something else I want you to see is that when you're playing a single note on the second or third string, you come to rest on the string below it. So if I hit the second string like this, my finger actually stops on the first string. It doesn't actually rest there. But when you're coming straight down, hitting the string with the back of your fingernail, it naturally stops at the string below it. Now again, when playing up to speed, this is not going to be noticeable because it's such a quick movement, but practicing it slowly like this will help you so you don't develop the bad habit of trying to avoid the next string by flicking your finger out and moving your hand out of position. That's something you really don't want to do. Um, you just want to bring that finger straight down. And that doesn't really apply to the first string because there's not a string down below it, but when you're playing the first string, You'll still want to maintain your basic position, and your thumb will kind of catch on that fourth string there and help you maintain that correct position. Now, you may or may not hit the top surface of the uke when you're playing the first string, and it doesn't really matter either way. Now, on the bum part of the bum ditty, when you're playing one of these individual notes on the first, second, or third strings, you just lift up your thumb without making a sound. Now the ditty part is kind of like a strum. It's most often played on the counts of two and four when you're playing in four-four time. That's similar to a country strumming pattern or a Carter style where you're playing boom chucka boom chucka boom chucka boom chucka bum ditty bum ditty bum ditty bum ditty boom chucka boom chucka boom chucka boom chucka. It's pretty much the same thing. It results in a similar sound. So the ditty part is this: after you've played the bum or individual note, you bring your hand back up without sounding out the fourth string on top. Then for the ditty, you come back down, strumming the first few strings, the back of your middle fingernail, making sure you rest that thumb again on the fourth string. But instead of lifting your thumb up without making a sound, this time you want to pluck the fourth string as you come off of it. That's that last part of the ditties. So it's ditty. So it's very slowly, bum, Diddy 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 bum. Now, on that strumming part, I said the first few strings. Doesn't actually matter a lot if you're strumming three strings or two strings or even sometimes even one string. just a rhythm thing. Although if you're wanting to hear all the notes in a chord, the first three strings will give you a fuller sound. Now I'm going to play the bum ditty slowly a few times so you can practice along. And let's hold a C chord while we're doing the exercise. And we're going to start with the bum on the first string, and then go to the second string, then the third string, and then back to the second string. And we'll repeat that repeat that pattern a few times. So we've got one ditty, two ditty, three ditty, two ditty, one, second string, third string, second string, first string, second string, third string, second string. If you're counting the measure out, it's one, two, That's how you play the bum ditty. That's the foundation of the claw hammer style. 
Now in subsequent videos on claw hammer uke, I'm going to add a few other techniques, but none of those are as vital to claw hammer as the bum ditty. So keep practicing it until this becomes second nature to you.